Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Yes, we are a webinar. You can call us that. We won't be offended. Um, it's what we do. Uh, we host these sessions um, live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, and they are recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always log on to our website and um, go and see all of the recordings of our previous ar archive sessions of all our previous recordings. Uh, we do um, a mixture of things here, presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions, presentations, basically anything um, library related, we want to have it on the show here. Um, we have guest speakers that come on, and we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do sessions. And this morning we have sort of a mixture. <laughs> um, once a month we do a tech talk with Michael Sowers, who is our technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Morning. Yeah, Michael's here. He's sitting right next to me here. Um, and he brings on things that are um, leaning more towards the techie side of things. Um, and so I'm just going to hand over to you, Michael, to introduce who you've got on with, um, with us uh, this morning. All right. Th thanks, Krista. Um, so a little bit of background about uh, how we got to today. Um, one of the things I will readily admit I don't pay a lot of attention to directly is ILS, it's Integrated Library Systems. Uh, there are vendors out there uh, that a lot of libraries use in Nebraska, uh, so the, the, the kind of the, the big iron, so to speak. Uh, then we have here in Nebraska the Pioneer Project, which uses Koha, the open source system which has got uh, a whole handful of libraries in Nebraska using it right now. Can't think of the exact number. It's well over a dozen, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then um, in a connected project, we do Nebraska Libraries on the Web, which is uh, hosted WordPress-hosted websites for uh, public libraries in the state. And so our guest today, Beth uh, Kulash, was uh, emailing back and forth with me about setting up her library with our WordPress system. And in one of her emails, she mentioned or implied something about Linux. And I wrote back and I said, oh, you use Linux. You know, and, and she's like, yes, I do. I use Ubuntu. And, and I was really happy to hear that. And then in the process of that conversation, uh, she said, uh, I pulled up the email yeah, here. Uh, yeah, I developed our lightweight cataloging software on Linux last winter. And I read that email and I kind of did a double take and I went, wait a minute, you wrote your own ILS? <laughs> and so immediately I thought, okay, this is somebody that we have to get on the show to talk about that. So uh, Beth, you, you're on the line? Yeah, good morning. All right, so yeah, go right ahead and, and tell us all about your project. Okay, uh, as Michael just said, that uh, we looked around uh, at computerizing a library and this is a very small town. We've only got 128 people actually in town and about 300 in the zip code. And the ILSs that we could, we could find that computerize it were just plain monetarily out of the question for us. And we were in the process of moving our library from an old building to a uh, modernized, updated building now. And we were, assist and we were volunteering to help the former library director pack up the books and well, she was also catalog you know in, you know cataloging cataloging or enjoying what what we had and what was what and what about to and we at this and said, wait a minute, this can't be that that difficult. You know that even though I've been you know, I I'd worked in I'd worked in software and studied it, I never worked in database design. But I'd been taught it and I could get the books out and figure it out again. So that was uh, what I did over my Christmas holiday. And uh, my, my background is um, I was a so software engineer for a Fortune 500 company. I mostly worked in, qu in software quality assurance. I ran my own software co company that went from everything from concept uh, to, uh, uh, to sending out to customers and customer support. And you know, I mostly worked in, uh, in software quality assurance, but I couldn't also write code. And Eventually, I ended up in this uh, small town in Nebraska, and I was urged to get my provisional li uh, librarian certification from NLC, and level three is a, re is a result of having the degree. And so I became a director of the small town library with no computerization, and 
like I said earlier, the software, commercial software that we could find was completely out of the reach of the budget. And so it was pretty obvious this was a simple database ap application. But it, it kind of grew like, uh, but it kind of grew because there were obviously some things that we needed. So what we, the first thing we did was an up-to-date catalog of materials that to uh, be sure that we have a, have a uh, the right kind of a cross section section of materials, and we're updating the uh, the catalog and weeding and adding new things as appropriate. We need to fi find out what we have, and that and the catalog would be should be searchable. As a kind of a side, I saw I found a notebook when we were moving in here, dated 1952, with a previous library director who had essentially done the same thing, but she didn't have the the, the software tools available. She All she had was a notebook and a numbering system, and she was essentially doing what I did. And uh, the other thing we wanted to have in there, besides being searchable, the value of the, value of the material. If, uh, if a patron loses an item, what should we charge them to replace it? Or if there's a disaster, we we'll lose all or part of the library and to get properly insured. And the other thing is our patron privacy is of utmost importance. So some of these software uh, things that I found wanted all kinds of information about your patrons, personally identifiable information like what they check out and you know what their what their needs and wants are. And it was pretty clear to me that was a that, that was a uh, way to market to them, which is certainly something that uh, Violates every concept of libraries that I've ever heard, and that we we certainly didn't want that. As I said earlier, the, the commercial cataloging software was financially out of reach for this small library. I found some freeware, but which would require your own your own local server, and that's not possible in the in the local area either, you know, because it's uh, you know, we do have a uh, fairly slow high speed inter internet connection here. And we've only had those for a few years since uh, since the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, pretty much assisted putting it in. And as I said, I helped volunteered to help inventory what we packed during the move. And doing what, what I was doing there was certainly not complex, and I certainly had the skills to do it. And then there were some considerations. That we couldn't use any applications or develop, development software requiring royalties for government or commercial use. Or we couldn't use images or text or rely on other applications under copyright. And as Michael just said, I'm you know, I'm a Linux person. And Linux is a free application, free for any user to download and use. And there are a lot of applications available in it, some of which lend themselves very very nicely to assisting with software design. Which brings us uh, from last winter to today. So we have it up, we, we're using it, uh, you know, we're, that we've, uh, we've got uh, well, almost 6,000 uh, items in the, in the library. And I know that other libraries have the same problem with uh, getting uh, computerization as we do. So I have this uh, have this lightweight solution. It, now it's you know it's, you know it, it can make it, it could probably be used for other small libraries. It's not it's probably not appropriate for a very large library. But for them the you know the commercial applications may you know may be appropriate. So we have something that works well for us. And so you don't have to reinvent it. So I'm, I'm distributing this to, every, to everyone who wants it for shareware. And we're just asking for a donation to our friends of the library group. It could be used in a small library, in a small public library, in a small business library, or even an individual uh, with a lot of books could probably use it. And small libraries are an unfilled niche for corporations you know, who you know that this is uh, just not a uh, area that they can probably feel they can make any money at. 
So here's what we wanted. At the very basic, we wanted a searchable card catalog. That if somebody comes in here and asks me, do you any have any books by loading them more? I can say, oh yes, we have this many books, and, yeah, and, and this is where they are. And, you know, information on location and of material, that it's kind of not appropriate to say, yeah, I know we have that, but I can't think of where it is at the moment. I may not be thinking along that line at the time. And statistics of how many, how many of what type of item we have for weeding and collection development. And patron privacy is an absolute must. That I fully support all of the AIs, uh, things on freedom to read, and the freedom to not be not be harassed for what you're reading. And we want information concerning the value of each item in the collection. And you know, for people, for if somebody loses something or so it's properly insured in case of a disaster. And these are the other things we wanted that should be nice to have, which is 24 by 7 online access. And a circulation system that didn't rely on old-fashioned book cards. Uh, the ability to place a hold on an item, check for overdue items, and notify the patrons that they have items that, items available, that they have items that they've had a little while longer than they, they should have. So, and our favorite topic, so candidates for weeding, what has it been circulated? And maintain a list of items that should be, that need to be replaced. They were lost, damaged, gotten old, they're you are very popular, we need to have more than one. And here are the non-goals, things that it, that it don't do, isn't designed to do. Uh, we didn't intend to do anything with magnetic stretch and scanners. That scanners, you know, they've gone down the cost quite a bit over the last uh, few months or year. Uh, there might be something, this might be something to revisit. But as of right now, there's no intention to do anything with uh, magnetic stripes or any kind of scanners. Uh, we didn't we didn't want to place any restrictions on who could check out certain things. If there are things in your library that you don't want, uh, say, children to check out, like say R-rated movies, that that's left to the library to, to the library staff and you know for P, uh, for PG movies, uh, you know for all. Uh, you know, parental, you know, parental written permission, and we didn't want to place any li any limits on freedom to read. And a small library, it's better to do a personal recognition and judgment than relying on software. We didn't want to start storing historical lending patterns, or taste of any patron or call them for any purpose, which is both good and bad. There were people that wanted to kind of wish we could, wish wish we kept track of what. Of what they checked out, but as of right now, we're leaving that up to them. Uh, they can write it down any way they want. And we didn't design to make it compliant with laws throughout the world. And you know, I designed it for my library that's in Nebraska, in the United States. And if somebody else can use it, that's that's great. But it's not designed particular to them. I developed it under Linux, and I used all the free tools that are available in Linux. And I use internet standard and, ind and industry standard readily available tools like HTML, PHP, MySQL, and JavaScript. And I developed it locally, working as a volunteer. I wasn't named director until well after I had it done. Of course, that brings up the idea of whether or not software was ever really done. And I used a great deal of free help on websites and books and forums and software developers that I know. And I borrowed some code and, I, and it was a label, uh, linkly available for free use in commercial or nonprofit applications where it was published, attributed to the source or attributed to the person that, that gave it to me knowing what, it, knowing what I was going to use it for. Uh, the cost involves our coffee, diet cola, pizza, and several used books. And I thought I got a lot of help from software engineers I know. I met through software forums and late nights. 
Uh, I got some help from uh, uh, one of my volunteers who is not a software engineer, but he told me just just how I could use the uh, what I have already had set up for books uh, to catalog movies and videos. That was that was great. Uh, so I developed it on a, on a Ubuntu Linux computer using the free tools. Uh, you know, there's a uh, code. There's a code editor there that is wonderful, and no Microsoft products were harmed in the development of this application. So how it works? Patrons are identified by the card number. Identi identifying information about those patrons is kept in a paper notebook in the library. It cannot be hacked. The only way you could get to it would be to physically break into the library, which is a uh, issue that we can't completely solve, but it's a lot easier to, to identify and catch the, catch the bad guys that way. Um, we're identifying our books by the ISBN or, or, AI, or AS, ASIN numbers. You know, so they have a unique identifier. Okay, our, our library has a policy of, of generally not to have duplicate copies of books, or if they're donated to uh, to, to uh, put one of them on the book sale table. Um, other other items like videotapes, videos and tapes and CDs, uh, they're they're identified arbitrarily. And there's a password to database. And uh, you know, privacy concerns. You know, if only support the uh, Freedom to Read Foundation and the LA. Uh, we don't keep any any information about what what people or card number have checked out, what material after the material is returned. At, you know, as soon as they bring it back. It's checked in. Uh, the record is erased. So the, the only thing we keep is the date of the last checkout. And that's for the uh, you know for the checking it for the evaluating it for the weeding candidates. And you know, that I brought that up with the uh, that even hacking can't uh, tell you who uh, you know who uh, who card number three thirty three is in my library. So intellectual property and copyright, and as librarians, we we're all quite aware of those things. And so, you know, I, I developed it locally by myself, and we used it where the author or the author of, of that code offered to be freely used, and and whatever credit the author wanted. And this was only about page. And please, please, please read the about the uh, read the about .html file file there. There's an awful lot of information there. In fact, a good bit of what's in this, rep, in this webinar is probably on there. And software this uses is, is part of the web host services, is an intrinsic part of, of the internet, according to your browser. It, it's kind of hard to be using the internet at all if you're not using it. If you can't use HTML or PHP, and MySQL is part of the web host services. And it's been tested and worked with most computers. I tested it with various browsers and various operating systems, versions, uh, various computer types, and various ages of computers. Some of our patrons are using some very old computers. And that's fine, and it will work with them, including it being very lightweight, very, mem you know, you know well, not, not memory intensive at all. People with the low amount of memory on their computer can use it. And I got several people's input on the usability of things. And there's and there are advantages to patrons. They don't need to make a special trip into the library to find out if the library has a particular item. Or find out what the library has on the subject of of airplanes. Or what, or if we have anything by Alice Miller. And we have categories for special needs items, like audiobooks and large type books. And ease of use. We've got 
menu items, input items have a, have a short help attached. When you hover over them with your mouse. And even if you have uh, very little computer experience, you can, you can, people can pretty well search for what they want. They may need a little bit of hand-holding to convince them that they can use the computer, that, you know, how to use a browser, how to connect to the internet. That, you, that uh, the idea was to not make it uh, so you had to be a, uh, had to be a software engineer or a tech whiz in order to use it. I wanted to make this available to anybody who wanted to, anybody who wanted to use a card catalog. And you can search for items in the library under any number of criteria. That, uh, here's, an, here's, an, here's an example of it. You know, we can search for books. And, you know, we can search for uh, things like, you know, like this. Like, um, you know, we can look for mysteries. We can, uh, we can look for humor. Uh, we can look for large print books. In a future version, I'll have I'll ha I'll have the able that you could do multiple. I guess say if you want to find a large print western, you could you could do that. But you know, let's see how this is. You know, like, uh, you can look at uh, I don't know. We don't have very many of. We don't have very many VHS. There are fairly few VHS tapes. Right. This one is the old one. It is an old version, so let's look for a look for a uh, look, for, look, look for a genre of humor. Well, not finding that one either. There. You know, found you know, found the one you know the uh, you know there's you know there, that's what we have in the way of nonfiction. If you want to find the um, you know you can might be able to it and find nine hundreds. You know, like meet General Grant. You know, we're in we're in the nine hundreds. Um, we're still working on uh, getting the Dewey Decimal System up here, but. Uh, one thing at a time here. So, and the summary of the collection it tells you gives you an idea of how many types and what genres are in the collection. And there's a user and staff version of this function. I'll show you the user version in a little bit. And you can tell a user. Or potential user or a realtor or somebody who's thinking about moving into the area, you know, what you have in your library, how many volumes, what sorts of things you have, and it gives you what the collection has, and uh, you can better ensure your loss. Summary collection. This is all done on the server side. That um, you know that we can see what we have in the way of adult books, or young adults, and children's. This was a uh, a, a fairly early uh, copy of uh, of our library's collection, and you know that you know it gets broken broken down like this. You've got the value of your collection uh, for somebody who wants to insure it. And if, it is, if there is a loss, you can, this, seeing as it's, this is stored, stored off-site at the place where the web host is, it's unlikely that they're going to be, be hit by the same disaster. So we'll, we'll have the information, you know, the insurance company says, okay, how did you come up with uh, your library being worth $10,478? dollars and we say, okay, we have these 1,500 items, and this is how they break down. And you know, this is what we have in all our different form, our different types of books, types of materials.
So now let's look at uh, look at available and what's on, on the back end. You know, there's we have stat, you know, there are user functions and there are webmaster functions. And for, you know, for user functions, okay. That we we should all be familiar with familiar with this uh, in this you know setting up our uh, you know the library website and here we have our catalog and this is the user version of that the same screen and if you if you do a uh, you, know, you don't have you don't have nearly the functions available for instance there's a lot of things that a user a patron or a, a, a curious individual shouldn't be allowed to do. But we'll, we'll, we'll have to look at some of them. But in this case, they don't have you know they don't have any information about about what about what, what it's worth. This is a, you know, this is a real this is a real library as it stands to date. We're still working on organizing everything, and I still have a whole bunch of uh, children's and young adult uh, materials to put in. But you can see. Uh, gee, do you have any Western books? Gee, I wonder if that library has any Western books. Uh, yeah, they have. It's funny them. Or large type books. Or audio books. That, you know, different people might be interested in those things. No. So now, now the end of an item, you'll need to have a unique identifier. You know, ISBN, a ASIN, uh, LOC, arbitrary numbers assigned by your library. Right, uh, back to this one. You know, you know, this was a, uh, you know, that. My fingers and my keys. That uh, you can look for things by, uh, you know, by an arbitrary number. But the DVDs, uh, they, they all, every every every, uh, every movie house uh, set set them up a little bit different way. Every every publisher sets them up in a different way. So I just just decided to arbitrarily number them one, two, three, four. And that's perfectly fine. You need basic info like your author's or creator's name, title, and the copyright or release date, and the age group it's targeted for, and what kind of an item it is. It's just a book or an audio book or a CD or, or if there's a performer or a reader. And you did say whether or not the item can ever be removed from the library. That we have special collections, we have uh, reference books. You know, we have some things that we just don't want you to move from the library, and some things, and most of most of it you can. And the price for the item or the value of the item, there's a lot of ways to value it. It can be the, it can be the the, the retail. Uh, cost of a new item, or the cost of shipping of a new appraisal value, or some other method. And if you don't enter a value, it'll be set to zero. And if the, if it succeeds, it'll, it'll give you success. Okay, I'll show you how to do this. Uh, This is my, uh, you know, my, uh, you know, my sandbox that I don't let anybody play in. I'm going to enter a book that I have sitting here that was donated. So my ISBN is. Oh, 
Put this in. Well, where are we going to put this? I'm going to put it with mysteries. And we have those alphabetized by authors, so. And. What are we going to say about it? The Susan Henshaw mystery, the copyright date. Look it up in there. 1998. It's an adult book. What genre is it? Defaults to, to general fiction, but I'm going to say it's a mystery. What kind of a thing is it? It's a, it's a regular book. There's no reader or performer. And we can usually get these things for like about four dollars. So we've entered one into the database. And we can I'll quit. You know, thank you, thank you for doing it. Let's search for it. Let's look for it. Let's look and find it. That's the book we just entered. And we can do other things. We'll, we'll get to doing other things with it. We can up, we can correct the errors. We can reclassify or revalue it. We can also, in the update function, you also have an option to delete an item. And in version 1.0, it doesn't have anything in place to keep track of any items that you want to replace. So you'll have to keep track of them so somehow outside of the program. And it'll display, the, it'll display the, it'll display the entire database, but they can be very long if you've got even our little library, and we're not even done, has almost 6,000 items, which can be quite long. And there are, and you can make a backup, there are better methods than to just uh, put it all out. Now, circulation of materials, which we do most frequently. But let's uh, go back to uh, the main menu. And I got back to, I get, got me a user menu. Let's go to what I named. Okay. Let's up, well, let's update the uh, book here. We can search on it by the same things that we could search, we could do it use on search. But seeing as I have the ISBN number in my paste stop, I don't have to use it. Okay. And you know, this is the information we have. Let's update it. How oh, are we going to update it? Oh. Let's say we found out this thing is worth a lot more money. Let's say it's worth, uh, let's say it's worth $50 and 28 cents. And we can change it. Oh, let's have a reader here. So. We'll have George read. We'll have George be the reader for this. So let's update it. And I have a lot of his computer ease things. I'll get to that later. But uh, uh, but uh, if you have any problem, if you give me any bug reports, I'm going to want to see. That. I'm going to want to know what's in there. So let's search. For, let's search for the thing again. Search for the same book. We're, in, we're getting in circulate, which is a, which is one thing that we do a lot of in the library. We can circulate, and I've arbitrarily got the, got the checkout day for two weeks, and it uh, uses uh, some things available in the database software to uh, calculate the U.S. holidays. 
and the success screen for checkout to fully confirm your due date. And you can inform the patron and put a, a place and label on the book. Let's Let's check out let's check out the book I just entered. You know that I've got it uh, checked out now. And we can go back to the main menu. And I'll go into the update screen so we can see what it looks like now that it's checked out. So in version one, uh, we want uh, uh, renewal is, is, is staff function. But they can contact the library staff, request them to be renewed. They can do it by telephone, by email, in person, whatever they want to do. And the shop will not renew it if it's on hold by somebody else. And it'll inform you if the thing is already overdue. And you and whatever you want to do. Uh, with your policy. If you want to, if the person has a book that's already a month overdue, you want to let them renew it, well, I don't know. Uh, that's up to you. And holds don't expire, but you can remove, but you can remove, an, remove a hold. Let's go back to search light books. That's more, and ho putting a hold on the item is in here, let's see. We'll, hold, we'll check our own item. And so we'll check it in. I don't know uh, that we'll want to that 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 you want to put a card number in for check-in, you don't have to. If you check it in, it's okay, it was checked out by 333. One, two, three, four. Uh, has the book on hold. Please notify one, two, three, four. The book is now available. And if you want to say check the book out, I'll show you how that does it. That won't, won't work. Same book. And it tells you the book's on hold. This this other user can't check it out unless you remove the hold. But maybe you haven't seen uh, one, two, three, four for a while, so let's let's remove it. Let's remove the the hold. So we one, two, three, four. We're gonna remove the hold. And now three thirty now anybody else can check it out. And uh, we don't. And uh, this version doesn't that doesn't computer that doesn't that doesn't compute the uh, whatever finds are available. It'll tell you that the item is overdue and what it was due, and you can figure the fine and charge the fine according to your library policy. Or some libraries don't don't do fines, and some of us are in the process of reevaluating that policy. And you can search for items that are over, that are overdue. Why don't we check out the uh, book? Um, I want to do something with it in a bit. <coughs> so here's one of our one of our our, our hover screens. You know, what's the latest date you want to hear about? And it shows you the format it wants it in. So let's, <coughs> let's say I want to hear from everything about that was due, everything from the first of the month. 
I don't want to hear about anything that was here before all this post. And we'll we'll do we'll just say we have some things that we checked out. You know that we can contact these people and find. And here you will see that there's a replacement cost for the material. That you got you contact seven and eight nine, and you know that, uh, and maybe it tells you it's lost. Uh, the replacement cost for this is two dollars and a half. Uh, can you, you know, pay for that or... Or, or back to, uh, readers and performers. Uh, we have, we have performers on, uh, CDs and DVDs and audiobooks. Now that could be interesting to a, a person who has difficulty hearing that they might be, might be able to understand a man's voice better or a woman's voice better, or that there are just certain readers that they like or don't like. And somebody comes in and says, uh, gee, I checked out that book and I left it on a bus uh, in Albuquerque and no chance of getting it back. Well, you know, you look up the book, delete it from the bed, database and then you assess the cost of the patron and then put it in your list of things to be replaced. It's a multiple function thing. We can maybe do it on one function in a different in another group in another release. Okay, here we go. Our favorite topic, weedy. Give you some assistance. It, it just tells you what items are circulating. But uh, no piece of software can tell you everything. But you probably don't want to uh, read the non-circulating uh, book uh, that, the, that, that part of a special collection and is not uh, available for circulation. And it will, it will just give you a list of things that just haven't circulated in some time. And, you might want to look at those. You know, the, like I said, we had no restrictions on what the uh, check brought out. Um, the intellectual freedom ideas. And here are your requirements. You need to have a website. You know, go to whatever web host that sells websites or possibly uh, the uh, government allegedly that uh, supports your library, the city, your village, your county. Must, it must support MySQL and PHP. Most of the commercial ones do. Watch so you're not paying for things you don't need. You don't need a shopping cart or credit card payment processors. But you might still might find it's less costly to choose one that provides them and just not use them. And you need to have a person to uh, Act as your webmaster. And who's your webmaster? Volunteer. Maybe somebody in your community has a blog. They might, if they have a blog or their own website, they can. They may be able to help you set yours up. Students uh, or the honor society or honor society members might be able to help you. Especially the computer science uh, students. It's not incredibly high, difficult to do at this at this level. Uh, you you may be able to develop the skills yourself. You may be able to find somebody locally who has them. Might be able to get help from the library commission. Sorry, Michael. Uh, you might you might be able to uh, contract to hire one up hire one for a short, for a short time for a specific task. And so this is uh, by and for librarians. We're going to recommend you some books. Building a website for dummies. The really, really easy step to step guide to building your own website for absolute beginners of all ages. And building a website for free. And you can find those books online or in your local library or maybe in your library alone. You need to find a web host that minimally supports my sick ball. You need 
you need to and you'll need to uh, download the database and what else? go to broadwaterftl.org and click on get my database and it's been released there's a uh, a version to download for Windows, you know, automatically downloads and puts things in a zip folder. Please read the README. And please, and uh, if you like it, please support it. Uh, all I'm asking is a $10 donation to our friends of the library group, and all of that money goes to support our local, support our local library. And you'll need to customize. You want you, you know you probably want to have your have your own thing. I've included my live logo, which is the which is that faded picture of uh, of a bookshelf. You can insert your own. Just watch for copyright on it. Take the picture yourself. Get a legally free source. Uh, a few things you want to uh, be sure to update. Going to, I'm in Notepad here, so let's let's open it. This one was uh, downloaded earlier. You want to, you want to do the connect the uh, connect DB. That you want to, you know, Dad, you're not, this, this is your non privilege account. This, this is what ours is, is Broadbot user. And, and, uh, that's, the, and the password in this case is password. And Broadbot library, you probably want something different than password. And, you want to, and then you have a secured password. That uh, you know that uh, in this case we have we have secured password, which is probably not what you want, but uh, you know set that up yourself. You want to change live main, and what way you find? What you find the things in here is you look for find one find a a thread and there's your database you know you put in put in your own library name there and We're in the Anytown Library and our telephone number is it's a phone number and your library's email address. That yes, it was double quotes. So okay. wherever you get your email, and you give you give your address, give, give your address the library or directions to it. You can put in something like. Our addresses want to be made. Hours of operation are what we want to say. Monday through Friday, two to six p.m. And we're and we're done. 
So we save it. And and, it, and here's the one we just opened oops, that we just opened. Let's open it with Google Chrome just to see just to show you that, that the things I put in there are, are are really there. Oh, it's going to take its time. You know that these are the, these are the things I put in. And You have this, this customization. You probably want to get your own live logo, or you can use mine. You know, or you can or just take a or take a take a photo yourself. Be aware of copyrights and who who owns the rights to them, and that that you've got a little copy of it. Uh, and Keep track of and the databases. Don't work for databases file. It, and the database is just in a specific format. Just don't don't get caught up in the computerese. Uh, so this is what the schema looks like. That we had a 13 character uh, field for an ISBN. Can you imagine that date? You know that we're keeping track of the whole of uh, uh, holes and uh, you know this is all the information we're keeping. And uh, you know it's pretty, you know it's pretty uh, stripped down to basic, but uh, privacy is guaranteed. It doesn't doesn't store anything like that. And uh, you know, the uh, the real thing that you have to have is um, the I the ISBN. That must be a unique uh, key to find the item. That's how it's organized. Some of the information is required by log my database, but not my SQL database. And and I've got this file on library.sql, which sets it up uh, that uh, you can use PHP my admin on the web post. That if you log into cPanel, I may be getting a little bit into the techie realm here. That this is uh, part of the part of the screen that you will see in databases. And you can and, uh, and just click on PHP my 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 admin, and from there you can uh, you can run library that this that that's QL and it will it will set it will set, set it up for you. You'll still need to set up passwords, which will, which uh, can and should be unique to your site. And I already said this, uh, you know that you know that you know keep. You know, uh, to customize the details, and uh, the logo has to be off of the. Uh, you know, you don't want to get into copyright or copyright infringements or anything like that. And then populate the database, and that's a big job. And uh, you know that I don't know where it would be if I didn't have. Uh, I have volunteers, and there was there were some people who were extremely helpful on this. And here is a here is a, a few words of advice: back up the database from the website frequently, and store multiple copies of it in multiple in multiple places. Put them on different computers. Uh, if, if you have a uh, a cloud storage, you can put one on there. If you can pull them by different sums, do that. You don't want to go through all of that work again. So, the implementation is it's 1.0 implementation. It looks good at my library. It's got some limitations. There are some things that are not yet developed. 
uh, helps that the lib designer and the library director are the same person. But there was also a disadvantage there that I had to uh, rely on my volunteers to tell me they didn't understand something. And most of them are not familiar with the back end of websites. They're limited to using a computer and navigating the web. And they gave me some suggestions to clarify the menus and gave me the uh, the help that's available on the, told me what to write, what they wanted to know for the mouse overs on all of the screens. Some of them like to have functions that are implemented. They like to set the library policy for the loan period and different, different loan periods for different items, have a better security system, uh, possibly to each user, change the theme and the color and the font. Those are, those are nice to have. This is shareware with a, with a Creative Commons attribution and share like uh, license. Please share this. You know, uh, you know, use it, copy it, give copies away, modify it. You can, you can include your name in the credits for what you modified. I'm only asking that you don't charge for it, or at least not more than it, than it costs you to to make uh, copies and mail them. And and please don't please don't commercialize it or try to sell it. And all we're ask what we're asking is that you send a uh, a ten dollar donation to a friend of the library. When you can, and when you feel like you want to use it, when you feel comfortable doing it, and please read, you know, please read the documentation. Read the about dot com on on, on the appears on the website. That you know, here is what that's how you get to it. You know, quote any page that says about. A uh, good bit of it is uh, tells you how to uh, you know how, you know how to uh, set, how to send me a, a bug report, and I told you about those uh, that computer read stuff. I you know if there's a bug in it, uh, please give me that. Please give me that too. It's there, and then, and if you have any suggestions, then. You know, I'm you know I'm, I'm willing to entertain them. And if you you know if you don't like it, uh, you know tell me what you don't like, and I'll see if I can modify it in the future. Because if you got a, got a problem, I'll uh, chance if somebody else does too. And if you install it, please register it. It's not going to put you on any mailing lists, but it puts you on our mailing list so we can uh, tell you that there's a new uh, version of it. And Obviously, we're not going to uh, to, uh, to sell you data or anything like that. It's just for our use. And if you don't want to use it, just don't pay for it. Uh, and the little bit of uh, legal things keep me out of hot water. That we can't give you any warranty or any specific warranty or any materiality of uh, purpose. You know, I developed this with the hope of, you know, to make it useful here, I'm offering it with hope it's useful to somebody else. I can't guarantee much of anything. You know, we're not a major software company. So we're done. All right, Beth, that was wonderful. I, we, Chris and I were sitting here just being more and more impressed every, mm -hmm. every next slide and demo you got to. Um, so, Krista, do we have any uh, questions from the audience? Yes. Um, yes, Beth, we had a couple of questions that are very similar, um, so I'm going to kind of combine them into one uh, for you. Um, going back to when you're actually adding items into the database, adding the records for the books and whatnot, a um, couple of different questions. Can you um, choose multiple genres for one book, put it in multiple categories? No, but that might be a suggestion for the future. If you have okay. a Western romance or right. a... Uh, uh, a, uh, a uh, funny mystery or something like that. Okay. But, yeah, that, would, that might be something that we could add in the future. Okay. And can new um, genres and formats be added to it? So can somebody add in um, other ones that um, aren't already in there by default that you created? Is that something someone could do with the software, add in their own genres that they have at their library? If, if you can write, you'll have to be able to write in the uh, 
into you know into the p into the uh, PHP code into the into the HTML code. But yes, you can you can add your own uh, genre if if, uh, if you wanted. To, uh, that would be fine. Okay, great. Yeah, because we have someone who works as a volunteer at both a nature center and a church, and he's thinking that they're interested in doing something to catalog their collections, and they might have other categories that aren't the exact same ones that you'd have in a public library, so he would want to tweak it for what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. That you know that you know that uh, say a nature center probably wouldn't have uh, a lot of uh, books on poetry, <laughs> or a lot of books on. Uh, on American history, but they might have things on uh, on, on on ornamental plants and uh, uh, food plants and things like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that but yeah, that could that, that could be uh, that could be customized too. And uh, the only thing is that you have to uh, you have to define a uh, a particular type of um, you know a you know a um, a letter for it, and just not have any duplicates in, it, in anywhere. But if you're going to get rid of uh, some of my, some of mine, because you you probably don't want to have a have a romance and you know in you know in a, in a church, let's say, uh, <laughs> but you could have uh, things like uh, Renaissance or uh, things about uh, people in the past and. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, someone did ask, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually answer the question for them. Um, how to get the software? Um, in the show links, I'm going to be including a link to the um, the where you can get the um, the live database software that she has. So when afterwards, you'll have that link from the library's website, uh, from the friends and the library's website. So it'll be on there in the information. Sure. Um, yeah, Beth, I just had a couple of, of really quick questions, uh, questions and, and maybe the one suggestion I kind of came up with. First, the, the comment we both had was that summary of the collection would be great for like reporting to the board, reporting to uh, you know city council, town council, whoever funds you. Um, I, could, I could see a real use for that. Um, my suggestion based off of that was like it said, you know, we have 125 westerns. If, uh, being able to click on that 125 and then getting a search result of all the westerns, you know, something like that would would maybe be a, a way you could go about it. That might be some. That might be a uh, a suggestion for next time. Yeah, um, and and then the one question I had was if you if you would estimate for us how much time you actually put into this project. <laughs> oh. Or, or do you not want to think about it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a couple hundred hours. Uh, I may be off by uh, a, fa a factor of uh, two or three hundred percent. Sure. Okay. <laughs> but you didn't do this in a weekend. I mean, that's. No. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and, and things on it grew that there were suggestions to do this, and you know, you know, and even on the. Uh, this live database. Uh, everybody I talked to wanted things displayed in uh, a different order and format, and mm -hmm. so I said, "Okay, let's just have a screen, and you can select what you can have in it. You can we can order it any way you want to." Which is why didn't she just? Oh, uh, okay. Um, we we have a question that has come in from the audience, and and. Um, let me see if I can kind of rephrase it a little more generally, a little less specific than it came through. Did did you look at some of the existing open source um, products like Koha or Evergreen, and if why or you know why did you decide not to go with those? I looked at Evergreen, and um, you know everything I everything I saw on it required me to have my own server, and like I say, it's that's. Not really possible that there would have to be someone that could uh, babysit the server. And sure. I'm, I'm much more willing to spend the time developing software and putting it up on a professionally run server than than uh, commit to being around to being around and having somebody around that's capable of bring, of uh, bringing up the server or if it crashes sure. 24 by 7. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I'll add, you know, even even Koha or Evergreen, which may be free up front. 
are not necessarily you know free in the long run and just even ignoring cost for a library of a certain size even one of those could be overkill um, so and it, and it seems like what you've done gets the job done for you and with, with your size of library so yeah like I say this is you know you know for a uh, you know for a uh, library like Omaha or Lincoln or even Scotts Bluff for things like uh, you know uh, it's probably, you know that it's probably not appropriate for them for a, you know for other uh, uh, libraries have that, that have number they uh, uh, there's the community they serve in the hundreds, it probably is. No, you know, it's a matter of, uh, of what you want. It's, you know, you don't need the yoga Sure. All right. Well, Beth, I, I, I will say I almost want to download this and start playing with the code. I'm just not sure what I would do with it, but uh, I, you, you have intrigued me that far. Um, I severely impressed by by the work that you've put into this and it, it looks like a, a wonderful project and I, I hope some of our listeners whether live or recorded will you know take a look at it and download it, it sound like we had one or two people that were uh, interested in possibly using it for some small projects so uh, Beth I just want to uh, say uh, thank you very much for, for being, being willing to do this and, and share your project with us um, and I think at that point, without any other questions from the audience, uh, we're going to go ahead and take back control for just a few minutes here and um, uh, uh, do one piece of news and then uh, wrap up the show for the day. Just one thing, if you'd like sure. to look at it. Go ahead. If you'd like to look at it, you can, you, you know, you can go to my sandbox at web com slant capital L-I-B capital M A I N dot H T M L and that will give you a, a staff uh, view of the database and that's you know that it's based on a uh, an older uh, copy of uh, our database but you can check things out, check things in, put holes on it. If but you mess it up too badly I can just go in and hit the delete key and Okay. Yeah. Um, for for those of you who missed the URL, we're we're pulling that up now on our end. We will include that in the show notes and make sure everybody can get to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so th thanks, Beth, uh, once again. And we're going to go ahead and just cover a little bit of news and um, do that. So I just really have uh, one bit of news that I uh, want to mention and share at this point. Uh, we've talked about 3D printers and 3D printing on the show in the past. Um, it looks like now kind of the next stage is happening, and I'll just quickly pull up this uh, brief article here from BBC News. Uh, MakerBot Industries, the folks who create the MakerBot printer, are actually now selling um, for, I will admit, $1,400, so it's not cheap. I'm not buying one myself tomorrow. A 3D scanner. Um, so, you know, we're all kind of familiar with the concept of scanning a piece of paper on a flat surface. Well, what if you want to scan a 3G object to then reprint a 3D object? Um, they are now starting, the, the 3D scanners have been around. This would be kind of the first one that would, in theory, supposing you have $1,400 to spend, one that's a little more available for the public to purchase. And it uh, says it, it takes about 12 minutes to scan a small, simple object. So these things are not fast. These things are not necessarily cheap yet but they are coming, they are now available, something that uh, theoretically you could buy uh, for your home or for your library if you wanted to scan a 3D object uh, for then reprinting a 3D object. Um, so that's kind of my one piece of news uh, for the month that I thought I wanted to share with everybody. So uh, I'm going to wrap up uh, Tech Talk here and hand it back over to Krista. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Beth. That was really cool, yeah. <laughs> um, it just shows what we were talking about, the 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 basics of an ILS are pretty simple, basic The core processes. functionality, the, core, function, the yes. core functionality of an ILS is, um, you know, she still said she spent hundreds of hours. I mean, so, but, right. but, yes. but, you know, at its core, it doesn't necessarily need to do a lot. Mm -hmm. Everything past that is, is gravy, I guess. So, you know, um, just, just to see what you can do with it. So. Yeah. All right, so that will wrap us up for this morning. The show has been recorded as usual, so the recording will be posted up later today or tomorrow. Um, I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is um, the Affordable Care Act resources for libraries. Um, okay. uh, I don't know, I think I screen here. Um, 
October 1st is the date when the healthcare marketplace goes live and libraries are where people are going to go in looking for help and assistance as they do with many things um, coming to us. So um, but we are going to have some resources and things available to you. Um, Mary Sowers, the Government Information Services Librarian here at the Library Commission will be updating us on all the new things that have come up. We did do a session on this in um, July. About a month ago, yeah. actually. Yeah. And things have moved along, definitely. You know, that was when we were just getting in, just heard about it at ALA, but now there's a lot more resources and things out there that you can use. So we're going to be sharing that with you. So please do sign up for that. Um, it will be, there will be some Nebraska specific things in there, but will also be some things that are just broad for any library in, in the country who's trying to help their patrons um, get up to speed on this and get enrolled. Um, if you are a Facebook user, please, um, I'm a Compass Live is on Facebook, so please do feel free to like us there. You will get notifications of when shows are starting. See here, I sent a reminder out this morning. You can log in on the fly. Um, and when the recordings are available, um, reminders of when the next shows are coming up. So if you are a big Facebook user, please um, do go ahead and like us on Facebook, and you'll keep up with us there. Other than that, we are done for the day. Thank you very much, and hopefully we'll see you next time and in the future on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>